You're listening to Praying with Power and Purpose. Hello, dear ones, and welcome to another episode of Praying with Power and Purpose. This is Z from Z Writes Words from SupernaturalUbooks.info, from PrayerJunkie.net, ZM7Academy.us, SorryBanks.com. I have a couple other websites out there too, but you can get to them all just by hanging around the other ones. I hope you're having a great day. It is Monday, May 2nd, 2016. Yes, we are already into May, the fifth month of the Gregorian year. And the um, the second month of God's calendar begins this weekend. And we'll be celebrating Rosh Kadesh. Make sure you get your first fruits offerings together and get those sown. Because when you come into agreement with God at the beginning of each of his months, then um, there are specific blessings that are laid out in the word when you covenant with him. And one of those, my favorite, is that he becomes responsible for you for that entire month for your provision. Because when you give him a seed at the beginning of the month, you say, okay, Lord, I'm coming into covenant with you. I'm restoring and renewing my covenant with you for the next 30 days that everything I need is going to be taken care of. And he shows up and he does that well. And I'm a witness of this because I've been um, honoring his calendar since at least 2013, maybe even a little bit before that, but at least the beginning of 2013 is when I started honoring his calendar. And the reason I did that, I shared this in my book, My Money Grows on Trees, Sowing into Revelation and Wealth, is because when I was asking him, you know, he had already spoken back in 2011, 2012, he began to speak um, great wealth for the kingdom over me. And so when I finally got to the point was like, okay, well, I'm not living in any wealth. So where's that going to come from? And I started asking him, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? You know, this is your promise. This is not something that I am responsible for. And not only that, um, Deuteronomy 8.18 says that he gives the power to get wealth. So a lot of times people think, well, what can I do to make money? What can I do to make money? Well, first of all, you're doing it wrong because you're not the one who has the power to give anybody wealth. It all comes from him. And that, of course, goes with Psalm 37, 4 and Matthew 6, 33. Everything stems out of those two things. You have the right relationship with him and he's going to give you absolutely everything else. When you're missing things in your life, you have to understand this. It's because you don't have the proper relationship with God for that specific area of your life. Therefore, it is not abundant. It's very, very simple process. Not an easy process, but very simple process about why you're not making it in certain areas areas of your life. Okay. But anywho, so when I was asking him, you know, how do I, how are you going to walk out this wealth for me? One the, one of the very first things he taught me after sewing was to, um, to get on his schedule, get on his schedule. And that just makes sense. You know why? Because he's in control of everything. It makes sense that you're on his calendar. You don't get all fezzed up. You don't get caught off guard by anything that's happening because you're on his calendar and he gives you the heads up. That's one of the, the benefits of sowing a, a Rosh Kadesh first fruit seed at the beginning of every one of his months. Because one of the things that he does is give you revelation for the next 30 days that are coming. So simple, so smart. Why doesn't every single believer want to participate in that? Well, because way back when Constantine started wiping out anything that had to do with Jewish people in church so that he could have complete control because power comes from the fivefold ministry and from people actually living Bible life. And he wanted to smash that out so that there was no competition between his power. And so when he pushed out anything that Jewish people did in relation to Christianity, that was one of the things that got pushed out. Okay. Well, God and Holy spirit have been slowly restoring. That's what every new wave and every new, um, outpouring of, of the spirit on the Christian church has been about God restoring things to Bible life, God restoring things to Bible life. And if you are somebody who, and that's what my topic is about today. It's about the fivefold ministry. If you are somebody who has not jumped fully into that river of his outpouring and restoration of everything he wants to do Bible wise, then that's why you're still missing out. And if you think, well, I'm already living the abundant life. Well, it would be even greater if you actually you know, did everything the Bible said instead of just the, you know, a little bit of what the Bible says. And then lots of traditions of men, traditions of men, they limit you from the true wealth of the kingdom. And Jesus said that to the Pharisees. He was like, look, you've got all this stuff on the outside, but you don't actually have the truth, the true wealth of the kingdom with you. Okay. So there's my witness for what I just spoke to you. 
All right. Okay, so I'm talking about the fivefold ministry. Let me just pray first. Lord, you know I get all hyped up talking about this stuff because I spent so many years living in church that didn't make any sense because it was focused on people instead of focused on Jesus. And I thank you for delivering me out of that nonsense. I thank you for delivering me into your truth. I thank you for delivering me into true relationship with you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I praise you, Heavenly Father, that I was able to come to you in confession today and confess my sin and be completely healed and restored, have my soul cleansed and be made new. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given me to speak your word. I thank you for teaching me and and impressing upon me how important it is to return people to the Bible and to make true disciples of Jesus Christ before it's too late. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I magnify you. I exalt you. I bless the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you free reign. My mouth is open for you to fill it. And I just decree right now that those who need to hear this message will hear it. They will receive the wisdom. I bind and I rebuke the spirit of offense right now in Jesus name. I bind and I rebuke the spirits of religion right now in Jesus name. I command you to flee because I'm submitted to God and you must obey the words that come from my mouth because they are spoken according to the word of God, the will of God and covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm talking about the fivefold ministry and I'm going to read to you Ephesians 2:20 real fast and it says having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. All right. So Jesus is the cornerstone of the church and it's talking about the church um, the church of Christ, the bride of Christ on the earth as a building. So you've got this corner here. This is the very first thing that you build um, when you're when you're putting a, a house together. You build this little cornerstone. So that's Jesus Christ right there. Him crucified, resurrected, and ascended. That's the foundation right there. That's the basis of every church. And if you're not hearing those things reiterated constantly and you your church doesn't teach full revelation of those things, you need to um, go to your your, whoever's in charge of teaching at your church and let them know, um, I'm missing some information. I don't have full understanding of this. I need you to get that to me. All right. And if you go to a church, I'm kind of jumping ahead of my notes here, but if you go to a church that doesn't allow you to give input, like they only want to hear you saying, oh, that was a really good sermon today, then you, you might need to get out of there. You need to pray and ask, but you should be able to give feedback. You should be able to ask questions and you should be able to say, this is what I need to learn right now. And they need to take that into consideration and get it to you. And if they're not willing to do that, they should at least tell you, okay, we'll go here and get resources. One of the things that I love about, um, um, one of my apostles is he says, the reason I bring in other speakers on a regular basis is because I can't give you everything that you need. And if, if your pastor and, or whoever speaks and teaches at your church doesn't have that same attitude, there's a problem there. That's a, a pride issue thinking that they can give you everything that you need. That's not true. Um, my mentor, Patty cake says there's a smorgasbord of um, wisdom and revelation out there and you want to eat as much of it as you can. And that's what the kingdom of God is like. It's about abundance. You know, it's about an over abundance of things for you to take, you know, take part in and participate in and to be able to be fed for the kingdom. Okay. So Jesus is that cornerstone, him crucified, resurrected, and ascended. And of course, the blood, that's the foundation, the cornerstone. And then the foundation is apostles and prophets. And the way they work together is, is um, the apostle gets like the big picture. Okay, this is what, this is the direction that God is sending us in right now. This is the direction that God is leading us over the next two weeks. This is what we need to be studying and stuff like that, or over the next whatever weeks. And, and then the, the prophet steps alongside the apostle and they're praying together and hearing the Lord and the prophet says, okay, well, this is how we need to walk this out. We need this person to teach this. We need this person to teach this. We need this person to teach this, this person to teach this, this person to teach this. And then you go on for the next steps. And it's like that in every situation. It's not just what's being taught. It's in everything that the church is the church does, they work together and they deliver those things. Okay. Well, where do they get the people who are teaching those other things? Well, you're going to look at the people in your house who are teachers, um, evangelists, pastors, and of course the other apostles and the other prophets and things like that. But at the same time, Apostles and prophets are always going and coming as well. And evangelists too. They're people who travel and go and come back and travel and go and come back. And that's basically what an apostolic center is. It's a place that sends out 
and then you come back with the revelation and all that stuff. You share it with everybody else is there and then you go out and then somebody else comes in and they teach this and then they go out and they come in and teach. It's a place that's constantly moving, constantly growing. And why is it constantly moving? Because if you look at Jesus's life, he was constantly moving forward toward his high calling, which was to go to Jerusalem, die so that he could be resurrected and ascend. Always looking forward to that last thing. Like what is our main purpose you know, as the body of Christ right now, what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be occupying until Jesus comes. We're supposed to be making disciples and preaching the gospel to all of creation. Those are the things that we're supposed to be doing. Those are the things that we're supposed to be doing. So our church generally, it's supposed to be bigger than just what you're doing in your little life right now. You're supposed to be looking, you know, always on a, on a bigger scale and making sure that you can, um, 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 plant your faith into somebody else that you come in contact with. You know, some people are going to say, okay, well, I just stay at home and I just work and I just do this. Well, that's fine. But you come in contact with other people most of the time, and you should be able to be able to serve the Lord in some way, shape or form. You know, even if you're just a mom who stays at home, when you go to the grocery store, the Lord can give you words of knowledge and you go and you help set people free right there in the grocery store. It happens all the time. Those things should be happening for you. You should be doing something for the Lord on a regular basis. Basis. Your church should be teaching you how to do things for the Lord on a regular basis. That's what the word says is that the fivefold is for the equipping of the saints. The gifts are for the equipping of the saints. You're supposed to go into church to get equipped so that you can go out and minister somehow to somebody else. You're not just supposed to keep that stuff right there in your own little pocket of the world. You're supposed to to, to put that out there somewhere. Another thing is like if you have kids, you want to be sure that you are... Um, planting seeds of faith, but you also need to make sure that they have their own faith and own relationships with Jesus. You need to teach them how to come face to face with each person of the Godhead. That's something that I taught um, when I used to work in preschool. I worked in preschool for 10 years. That's something that I taught. I taught um, kids how to come face to face with Jesus themselves, how to get to know them. You know, for the majority of the years that I taught in the preschool, because I went to a Baptist church, I didn't know how to teach them how to come face to face with Holy Spirit. But I do know how to do that now. And that's something that I do teach other people on a regular basis. All right. But you need to have face to face relationship with each person of the Godhead. If your church cannot facilitate that for you, you need to find a place that can facilitate that for you or 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 something so that you're not missing out on anything that they have available to offer you so that you're not missing out on any of that relationship. I see people every single day just talking to them, you know, mentoring them, listening to them, watching them, observing them, all kind of stuff. They don't have a personal relationship with one of the three persons of the Godhead. Lots of times they just have a superficial faith. Yeah, you can still get into heaven with a superficial faith, but why would you want that? You know, you're missing out on so much because they are so amazing and so awesome. You know, they really are wonderful and you need to get to know them each individually. Um, I have a teaching that's called Adopted. You can go to Supernatural U Books.info and click on the digital downloads tab and there's a, a course there that's called Adopted. And you can download that course, but that one walks you through coming face to face with God, the father, so you can get to know him and um, like really get to know him, commune with him, have visitations in heaven with him. You know, like he'll bring you in and let you sit on his lap and he'll just talk to you and love on you and you just really get to know him. And then you like this is really good for you if somebody if you don't have um, the, the comfort level of calling him dad or Abba or daddy or anything like that yet. You really need that course because you need to come into into that that portion that position of relationship with him if you're not comfortable calling him dad or whatever you, well I call him dad that's what I call him some people call him daddy some people call him daddy god some people call him abba some people call him papa whatever you call him you know if you don't have that place of relationship where you're comfortable with him you know in that way you know him that way because of all the other issues you've had with your natural father your natural parents or whatever you really need to get that course um, it will absolutely bless you and open your eyes and it will set you free. All of my resources are about deliverance. That's what it's all about because that's what you're doing in life. You're going from one level of deliverance to one level of deliverance to the next level of deliverance. And every time you get delivered, you're being elevated and moving into higher realms of truth with the Lord. And when you get higher and higher and higher, you become more useful for him. But you also begin to experience more of abundant life. OK, so. There are churches out there who don't want to hear anything about apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. They don't want to hear anything about the fivefold. But guess what? Those churches are out of God's will. 
You know, that's, that's the way he established the church. It's right there in the Bible. It never says anywhere that I no longer want this fivefold, um, function to, to, to be the, the, the makeup of a church. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. So any church who doesn't honor and respect the fivefold ministry has set themselves against God in that portion. And that's not a place that you want to be in, especially in these days. And I'm talking about this because like I said, I'm passionate about it because I lived in churches for a long time. And when I hit crisis in 2011 and my church couldn't help me and I started reading the Bible, I'm like, oh, well, this is why they couldn't help me because they don't have any idea what's going on. They're running the church the way people want a church run instead of running the church the way the Bible is supposed to is, is you know, the way the Bible wants the church run. Like not only this, did you know that in the Bible that the, that we're not supposed to be dependent on the government for things like welfare, social security and all that stuff. Did you know that that's the church's job? That is the church's job. That's what God wants the church to do. But do we have that much money? We have quite a bit of money, but we're not, um, we don't have unity, you know, on a large scale in the body. So we can't do as much as we could. And I'm talking about this. Um, I do the, the Grey Dreams Network prayer call um, every once in a while. And this is what I'm talking about on my call on May 4th. It's the Lord talked has been teaching me one of the things the things that he's gifted me with um in my office of being a prophet is that i know how to pull money from certain places and put it in other places for the kingdom's benefit and that's what i'm going to be sharing on my call tomorrow on the prayer call tomorrow but um but there is wealth out there that should be coming into the kingdom that the lord has d- has purpose to come into the kingdom but it's gone to the world because we haven't stood up and actually served him the way we're supposed to serve and serve other people the way we're supposed to serve this happens all the time people lose out on money because they um, do what they think should be done with it instead of doing what god thinks should be done with it and that has to stop like he's been releasing the words for wealth transfer from what i can tell for about the last eight years but a lot of wealth transfer hasn't occurred it's only trickling because we're out of alignment with what he actually wants done in the earth. And if you actually want some wealth, you need to get into alignment with him in every single way that he tells you to. You can't just do part of it and think he's going to give you the wealth that he has in mind. It doesn't work that way. And if you've been promised wealth transfer and you haven't experienced great wealth transfer, it's because you're out of alignment with something that he's told you to do. You're not doing something that he specifically told you to do. And you can't say, oh, well, this person was supposed to come into alignment with me, come into covenant with me. And that's why it didn't work out wrong. If one person doesn't say, yes, God will pick somebody else. You know, everybody knows that he did have the plan for you, but he will pick somebody else to step in to make sure that his plans and purposes are fulfilled. But the problem with that is that when somebody else has to step in, they then have to be trained because you dropped the ball. You know, and that takes time and that pushes God's agenda back. Stop pushing God's agenda back. Submit to him. Stop just trying to to live your life in the traditions of men and doing what people do and actually serve the Lord. Do what God wants you to do. You know, that's the easiest thing to do. Just do it his way. If you want the benefits, you got to do things his way. Okay, so back to the fivefold. Okay, so any church that doesn't honor, you know, the setup, the makeup, the biblical makeup of of the way a church should be run, the way a church should be established, you are your church is out outside of the of alignment with God. You're outside of the will of God. You're outside of the original plan of God. And so when this is one of the things that I do, like in my little town, I don't I go around churches and I start these prayer groups. Right. And I'm birthing revival with these few women in each church that want to pray with me. Because they want to live Bible life and they want their churches to live Bible life. You know, they got read something in the word and they're like, oh, my gosh, this isn't happening in my life. Something's got to change. There's got to be more out there. And so we're praying and the Lord is moving and working. And I see him moving in these churches and doing all kind of stuff. But this is the thing. Like in one church that I was praying at, I had a vision one day when we were praying of it, this angel, this gigantic angel come down over the top of the church with this huge sword and just drop it right down in the middle of the of the building. OK, and see, this is the thing. When you start praying for stuff and start praying that you get a church into God's alignment, he'll start moving people. He People will get. You know, those positions will be gone. People will get moved. People will get separated. Things get shaken up. If you pray and step out of the way and allow the Lord to come in and do some things, his changes, his shakeups don't always feel good. They don't always look good to you. But when you start praying what he wants to pray, that's what happens. Because if you actually purely want it to be his will, his design, so that you can actually reap his benefits, that's what has to happen. He has to shake those things that can be shaken so that he can make sure that that foundation of Jesus Christ, apostles and prophets is set in motion, right? 
Okay, so I I am one of those prophets who that's one of the things that I do. I'm one of those ones that pull down. I'm sorry, this church isn't operating right. It needs to be fixed. It needs to come into alignment with God's will. And those are things that I pray for. So I shake things up every once in a while. And no, that's not exactly popular. But hey, I'm not trying to be popular with people. I'm trying to make sure that more of this world, especially the United States of America, looks more like God than it does right now. Okay, so. Just be aware of that and start praying for your church. If you care about what God wants, start praying for your church that it begins to look like a church that God wants it to look like and not what people want it to look like. You know, I I go to churches. I visit different churches every once in a while just to sit in and see what's going on. And there are people sitting there just hurting, bleeding, crying all over because they're not teaching what what people need. They're not teaching people's hearts. They're not teaching people's souls because they're not looking at that. They're not reading that stuff. They're thinking, oh, I want to teach sermon on this. Oh, this was really popular. Oh, this gets lots of tithes. This gets lots of giving. And then so they start teaching those things instead of and, and preaching those things instead of actually um, ministering to the people who are sitting in front of them so that they can become whole and go out and bless other people in the world. OK, well, that stuff needs to stop. It needs to stop. And the the problem is, is that the more that that happens, the less uh, the less of that that big awakening of the Holy Spirit that's going to come through, because what that's doing is that's warring against the spirit of God. It's warring against the will of God. When you're so set in your ways, like I need my church to start at nine. I need this to happen at nine twenty. I need this to happen at nine thirty. I need this to happen at nine forty five. I need this to happen by ten fifteen. And we need to be dismissed by ten twenty five. OK, that is not Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ or God being in control of a church. That is men. That's people. And you wonder why your church isn't exploding and why there isn't more provision in that church, why there aren't miracles breaking out every few minutes, why people aren't getting set free, people aren't getting delivered, why the demons are still sitting in church with the people week after week after week instead of crying out and being thrown out in the middle of worship. It's because there's no Holy Spirit freedom there. Remember, you have to remember that the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. If your church is all tight and you're afraid to stand up, afraid to lift your hands, afraid to cry out and worship the Lord or cry because you're so broken and so hurt that you need somebody to see that you're hurting. There is no Holy Spirit liberty there. And that's why that stuff isn't happening. And that is a man led church as opposed to a God led church. And there are more of those around from what I can tell than there are actually Holy Spirit led churches. If you go to a Holy Spirit led church It is different. You will get served free and you will want to go back there. I guarantee this. All right. I'm getting all fezzed up and hyped up and running long. So I'm going to let you go. I'll be back on this topic again soon. Just depends. You know, you have conversations with the Lord and then he's like, share that and you share it and you go on. So the next time he brings up um, the topic of the fivefold. And, and what's going on in churches these days, then I'll bring that back. But you may have to listen to this a couple of times to get anything out of it because, you know, I'm a little bit hyper, but that's OK. Just passionate about those things that I'm delivering to you. I pray that you do get something out of it. And like I prayed before, you know, you watch for the spirit of offense and watch for the spirit of religion. If you're jumping up arguing about this, you can argue all you want to. But everything that I told you came right out of the Bible. And if you want to argue with that, then just know every time you argue with something that is in the Bible and I'm not giving you a crazy revelation. I'm just telling you exactly what the Bible says. You know, there 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 wasn't even any real need of of interpretation of the word of the scriptures that I brought to you about the spirit of the Lord, having given you Liberty about the fivefold ministry, those things, you know, they're all right there in the Bible, very plain for anybody to understand. If you have argue and offense toward anything, any of those things, that's you arguing with God. You're not arguing with me. I'm just delivering the message. I'm just reading the word straight out of the Bible. So watch for the spirits of offense, watch for the spirits of religion. And that's the thing. That's how you know when you have the spirit of religion. If you get offended by somebody just reading a couple scriptures out of the word, if you, you know, you're like, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't believe that. I don't want to hear that. Then no, the spirit of religion is operating in your life. The spirit of offense is operating in your life. All right. So I bless you in the name of the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you are somebody who who allows themselves to attend a church where the spirit of the Lord has brought complete liberty. I pray that you know Jesus face to face, Holy Spirit face to face, dad face to face and get to know them in greater fashion as the days go ahead, because you don't know what's coming unless you are in relationship with them. You know, you can get 
those prophetic words and stuff like that, where people explain to you the things that are coming over the days ahead, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen in your life. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to affect you. The only way you're going to know how your life is going to play out is if you have enough relationship with them that you can hear from them. And then that when a prophetic voice is spoken over your life, you'll know how to partner with it and you'll know how to discern what is for you and what is not for you. All right. So again, visit me at zwriteswords.org. Um, you can buy all of my resources at supernaturalubooks.info. Um, prayerjunkie.net has prayer instruction videos so that you can learn how to pray with power and purpose and be effective in your prayers. And um, I think that is about it. Oh, I am doing a Periscope broadcast on Thursday, May 5th. It'll be about 5 p.m., Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. So please join me if you can and invite some friends. All right. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye.